Hello, English teachers worldwide. Welcome to another Featured Teachers webinar brought to you by the American TESOL Institute. I'm your host, Jason Levine, better known as Fluency MC. Our featured teacher for the month of November is Mary Musto. She'll be with us in just a moment. Um, we have a great topic. I'm sure you'll be interested in this one, the power of play in English language teaching. That one is very dear to my heart. Mary, thank you so much for agreeing to be our featured teacher this month. Welcome and how are you? I'm great. It's Friday. Um, it's, uh, I'm in South Africa, so it's uh, spring, summer. Um, so it's got that electricity, end of year, electricity, summer's coming feeling. Lucky Very you. Different yeah, to the other. In the other hemisphere, I'm in that like, oh, it's fall, winter's coming mode. So yeah, I'll have to wait a few months. So where, where are you in South Africa? Yeah, I live in Cape Town. In Cape Town. Okay. And yeah. are you from there originally or you moved there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've lived here my whole life. It's, uh, it's beautiful. I've traveled a lot, but it's the best place on the planet, I'll tell you. It really is. I'd love to visit one day. So, so you said you traveled a lot. Is, is that how you got into English teaching? Can you tell us a little bit about uh, how you got started? Yeah, so, I mean, I never wanted to be a teacher at all. Wow. <laughs> I always looked at people. No, I just I looked at teachers at school and they looked so depressed and so uh -huh. stressed and so like, ah, you know, and I remember looking at them and being like, I will never be a teacher. And it's <laughs> very ironic. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to travel. I wanted to see the world. I wanted to experience everything. And um, but I needed money. Mm. Right. So and then I was also studying Italian at university. So there was this opportunity to go and teach um, on English summer camps in Italy. And I was like, yes, money, adventure, Italian. It was amazing. So, I've done that, by the way. So I want to come back to that. But I want you to keep yeah. that. I've done Italian summer camps. So I'm, I'm curious That's to see. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, you did that. And you, you, was that what changed your mind about teaching or not yet? You were just thinking, oh, I still have a job. I'm making money. I'm traveling. You weren't hooked on teaching. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was that. And then um, I finished my degree and... This is a bit ridiculous, but my, my, fa my father's very benevolent. He is, was like, I will pay for your degree, but you need to finish something. You need to come mm. out with something now. And I was like, oh, if I become a teacher quickly, then, <laughs> uh, then cool. So I yeah. became a teacher quickly. Um, and then I went to South Korea, did the South Korean thing. Um, came home and taught in South Africa in a school for like two years. Realized that was way too rigid for me. I don't believe in school. I think mm. it's crazy. Mm. And, um, I mean, you know, like children, 10 year olds in a desk all day long, it's insanity. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, then started teaching homeschool and teaching online. And I've been doing that for the last, um, teaching online for the last like seven years, I suppose. And is that, is that a full-time thing? So you're always teaching online or you have other work you're doing as a teacher in person? Um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty full time, but it's not, you know, like I do have to do a lot of other things, you know, my, I, okay. my day is not exactly an eight hour day, you know. I got you, yeah. but you're not, you don't, you're not teaching uh, in person at a school. Your, your teaching no. experience now is, is online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's online and um, um, yeah, it's all online. I, I was teaching maths face-to-face uh, -face for quite a long time, but um mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, uh, the traveling, I have a motorbike and traveling around the city, I'd be like, finishes now and I'm traveling. It was super dangerous because yeah. I had 15 minutes <laughs> and I was driving like a maniac and I was like, this is going to lead you to death. Yeah, one so. of the many advantages of teaching on online is it's safer. <laughs> safer from, you know, certain viruses. Uh, <laughs> as well as motorcycle accidents. Um, yeah. So, so who, are, who are your students right now? Is it, is it all English language teaching or is it, is it different subjects? Uh, I do teach some maths. Mm -hmm. um, I teach some maths to some Americans, uh, which is, I love maths, but um, mm -hmm. I teach mainly English. Yeah, I teach a lot of Israelis, a lot of Russians, um, smattering of Europeans. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And these yeah. are kids or adults or a mix? Everyone, yeah, everyone. Uh, yeah, I teach from five year old to my oldest student's been 70. Okay, um, wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool, very cool. Very cool. And, and, and they're from different parts of the world, or they're mainly people in your part of the world? 
Yeah, so I mean, it's people from yeah Europe, Israel, Russia. Mm. I've taught yeah, I've taught Chinese and Japanese, and but mainly like mostly Israeli and Russian has been like okay. consistent for many many years. Yeah. No, it's funny when you said that, I, I realized I hadn't asked if that meant they were in South, because, you know, Cape Town, there are a lot of people from all over uh, the world. So I wasn't sure if it was yeah. people that were there, but it, so they're, they're mainly yeah. in, their, in their home countries working with you from, from their home. Yeah, but they can, yeah, but everyone in South Africa can speak English. I mean, yeah, so my other students, my school students that I was, they were South African, but n mm. not online. Yeah. Right. Right, right. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah. the power of play in education. Mm. Where? So, so I guess let's before we get to that. Where, where did you, or when, where were you uh, when you decided I really want to teach? Because as you said, you you kind of chose it. You were thinking about traveling, needing needing money. Uh, when, w was there a certain moment or moments where you decided you wanted to to teach? And then how how did that, how did play get uh, working, work into that? But, so the thing is, is like, I, I just love having fun. I'm a total child. <laughs> like, I just, all my life, I just want to have fun. And it's like the idea of growing up, having to have a job and sitting around and it was mm. terrifying. And I think it is for a lot of us, actually. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a special snowflake. That's terrifying for a lot of us. But, mm. um, and, I, and it was always just like, what am I going to do? And and then I started teaching, you know, I went to Italy, I went to South Korea and I, and it, it, it was more like I fell in. It was like, a, mm. it's like I realized that I had this, um, like I actually had a bit of a talent, you know, because I love people. I'm actually, I, I'm intrinsically interested in other people. Like mm. when I'm asking people questions about their life to make them talk English to me, I, I really care. Like I want to mm. know every detail of their day, you know, so, so it's like this natural it's a natural thing I, and I and I love spending time with people so after a while I realized oh I just get to hang out with people and then like teach them some stuff along the way and then we get to have lots of fun and, and that was a huge thing because um you know you go to school and you think you know teaching is this like mundane thing and you mm. like, have to be in rows and and then so Italy was it was super paramount in my um and opening my eyes because um I don't know if maybe we were in the same company or something but but, you know, it's just like in, on the camps, they're like children will learn through games and they'll mm -hmm. learn through songs and they'll mm -hmm. learn through this. And it was like, it was very tiring, <laughs> but every moment you needed to think about how you were going to make a game out of everything, how right. you were going to create this opportunity for, um, um, yeah, for, for them to learn that way because obviously they go to school and they're like, ah, oh, why, who cares about this English stuff? But then you go to camp and it's so fun and then they get into it, right? Mm. Um, but, but I think like we, we call this like the power of play for it, English education, but my, my focus more and my interest more is play for adults mm. because mm. obviously we know children need to play through games. It's talked about forever. It's very important for sure. But like, I think that adults need to play. And obviously you do too. I mean, I was looking at your YouTube channel and I mean, it's all like, let's go, you know? Yeah. And um, I'm just a great believer in, in, in that. Like we live in this like stressful go, go, go world of, mm. um, you know, this is serious. And, you know, when you get older, like, and I also think that's why people drink a lot. Mm. You know, we drink <laughs> alcohol because it makes us be allowed to be children, you know? So so if we can create these spaces where mm. you can like act like this crazy person, but you don't need alcohol, which is healthy, yeah. um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's something that's, yeah. Wow. Well, um, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think once you start, I mean, I, I at one point was making material for young learners and then the only reason I, people ask me, why don't you have you know, more songs out there for, for young kids? I actually have a lot of stuff I haven't released. And it's because um, with adults, right, there are fewer materials that for play and fun. You know, so the more, more, I, I focus much more on games and songs um, for, for adults. Um, mm. Because as you said, you know, with kids, it's, uh, I mean, except you also gave an example, which is really tragic that, you know, classrooms with 10 year olds sitting at their desk. But, uh, but yeah, if, if anybody gets up and does language learning through play, through games and songs, it's usually kids, but that doesn't make any sense. I mean, once you start 
uh, using games and songs with adults, you realize, wait a second, learning is really play and play is learning. It never stops. It's just about figuring out what your learners get into, whatever their age is. Um, is, is, that, is that what you found? Yeah, yeah, no, completely. And, and it's just like, so, okay, we can learn the present perfect and, and I can be like, this is how it works, you know, and then we can do some examples and, and cool, right? Mm. But there's like, you know, if you look up like present perfect conversation games, there's like 20 of them, right? Mm. And, then, and then you can play them even with individual students. And, and it's, it's amazing how differently it starts to like get into their brain. You know, it's like, there's this amazing game I play. Um, it's called the Yes, I Have game. Mm. Obviously, there's Never Have I Ever, which is wonderful. We love mm -hmm. that game, right? But um, the Yes, I Have game, it's like I, I say to you, um, have you ever been skydiving, right? Mm. And you have to say, yes, I have. Okay. Mm. And then you say, yes, I have. And then I ask you three past simple questions mm. about that situation. So mm. I'm immediately switching my questions. And then you have to say, yes, I've, um, you know, I went with my mom and mm. blah, blah, blah. And you, and you either telling the truth or you're lying. And at the end, I guess, are you telling the truth or lying? And my students, they love it. They love yeah. it so much. Adults love it because it's like, it's not too out there. So they mm. still can maintain, but like they can, they can put these two things together and then they don't have to always talk about their own lives because I think mm. sometimes that like, that like takes the language and makes it a I bit smaller. I was thinking, that's because, exactly what I was thinking as you were explaining this game because I do similar yeah. games where it's not just about them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It takes them out of that, makes them be creative and, mm -hmm. and then also there's like this trick to it. And, mm -hmm. um, and just like things like that, I just find um, it helps them kind of mirror you know, how, how language moves in real life. And, and um, yeah, and I just find so much better to teach grammar that way. Then also, also, if you do go the grammar route, then you're putting them back in high school. And, mm. and there's all kinds of tra trauma in, in school that everyone's Absolutely. like, oh, there was this teacher and they said this thing. And like, it was, you well, know. Yeah, it's, it's that, and I, but I think e even, even more so, it's just that, you know, when, when kids, I mean, tell me what you think about this. When I, when I train teachers, we're all, uh, talking, always talking about this, is that, you know, when, when you're a kid, you don't have the ability to think analytically. You're, you're, you, don't, you, haven't, you don't have higher order thinking yet. And that's, you know, why you can absorb and acquire grammar structures and language because you're not stopping to think, you know, it, is what's the word order? Is that a participle? Is that so the more we're feeding adults, because as adults, we do have that analytical thinking. <laughs> so there's mm -hmm. this tendency to feel like, oh, we should explain things because students have this ability to think, but it just impedes language acquisition in most cases. I mean, that doesn't yeah. mean if, if an adult student wants to know, you know, is this a transitive or intransitive verb or whatever, that I'm not going to say, don't, you know, I'm not going to answer that question because it impedes acquisition of, of English. But, but you know, uh, I'm certainly not going to be the one that's focusing everybody on that stuff because in general, it, it really gets in the way. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's not about you know, trying to ha having adults act like little children. It's just like mm -hmm. you said, like getting in a frame of mind where they're, where they're relaxed and not stressed. And, and when that happens, the analytical thinking usually goes to the side and, 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 you know, they're able to, to get more, more language. Yeah, no, but I mean, so, so obviously, um, I was thinking about this a lot the last few days. So I was like, oh, I have to talk about this to people. So, <laughs> um, and, I, and I found this really cool. Um, I mean, lots of great things about play for adults, right? But there's mm. this cool quote I just want to share with you. Um, it says, um, play for adults is critical in our stressful go, go, go lives. Play has been shown to release endorphins, improve brain functionality, stimulate creativity, mm. and it can help to keep us young and feeling energetic, right? But studies show that play improves memory and stimulates the growth of the cerebral cortex, which mm. is super rad. Like it's yeah. like making your brain bigger. You know, mm. if when, we, when we get out of the stressed world and we actually just enjoy and try and experiment, mm. you know, and, mm. and, and just also be creative. Like, yeah. you know, like small children, um, they draw sun and then mm -hmm. they paint it blue. And we're like, you're so creative. Well done. Mm. 
Mm. And then adults, it's like, you have a blue sun and okay, obviously you could be an artist and that's cool. But there's this like, we must be perfect and we must be right. And we must do these things. And um, yeah, I just, I just, um, I just think that we, we've, not everyone, and I do think these days, um, especially with the internet and like a lot of sharing ideas, a lot of more people are playing more as adults. Mm. But I still do see a lot of people like living these like rigid lives and not um, allowing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was just thinking uh, it is, I think if it's going in one direction, it's going in the right direction with more adults playing games and, you know, the internet soon moving into more virtual spaces where i think the idea of learning through play and learning through fun learning through you know uh uh experience uh will just become the norm uh i hope <laughs> but you know it's funny like you know looking at language teaching i mean because because i you start to think how how did it ever happen that you know it it went from just learning in playing and learning this way to to you know studying things uh especially with language and um but one thing that to to keep in mind i guess is that you know it's relatively recent that learning a language was about you know practical skills and communication i mean if you look at especially in the school systems you know so if you were going to like okay learn a language to travel or to communicate, you know, it was more like Berlitz or something. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like in school because school, there's hundreds, thousands of years of, of, of why would you study a language? It wasn't because you're going to go use it. Yeah. You study it as a subject. So it was kind mm -hmm. of lumped in like everything else. It's kind of like computer science, you know, uh, before mm -hmm. people were, you know, needed the skills to just use a computer every day. I mean, it's, yeah. it's like night and day computer science uh -huh. and, and how, how yeah. to use a computer every day. And and it is with language too, right? I mean, it, it, there's totally, totally different approach if you're going to train someone to be a linguist, <laughs> you know, or just someone who's going to use it all the time. So, so I think when we get into the using it all the time, the skill side, you look at the best teachers, the best materials, it's about play. It's, it, it's about mm -hmm. games. It's about fun. Yeah, you know, uh, regardless of what the age is of the student. Um, yeah, yeah, no, no, definitely, yeah. and uh, it's, I just also feel like you know, obviously, as an English teacher, you are, you know, you're. I mean, we all know this. You're not just an English teacher. You're, you're a friend. You're. It's, it's about mm. connection, it's about communication, and like, and like, if you can bring this playfulness to your lessons, like, I mm. think you can really help people i mean a lot of people i meet and especially <laughs> especially russians uh, some of my russian students um they work in corporate jobs things are super serious they're younger than me and mm. they work way harder than i do you know mm. and and um and just to give them this like space of just like let's let's explore it, it's i think it's a beautiful thing mm. um cultivate in in all people um mm yeah yeah so. and, and you know um the you know the the it's it's not that there isn't value maybe in learning like you know um without playing but it's funny it's like is there value to learning you know uh other skills without playing in the sense of playing being practicing so that's that's really what's different here i think like you know would you study the trumpet without really playing and you know yes. tennis yes. you know because yes. <laughs> dance because that's really what a language is again if 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 you're going to communicate with it you know if you're just going to study yes. music right you could study music and never play. again that's like the linguistic side of language right yeah but we're talking uh -huh. about something else that's not what we're doing so it just would it just seems to be criminal <laughs> to do any kind of just you know maybe you if you're going to play the piano you're going to you know learn a little bit about how a piano works but you know that's going to be like a tiny fraction of what you're doing you know mm -hmm. you know so it's uh, like if that's if what you're doing with language with english learning is is this much like learning about how it works what's going on here of course you're not going to be able to use it yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, I mean, that's a great point. And I, I was also thinking a lot of that as well. I think I mentioned that in my little bio, like, um, mm, like yes. practice, like, you know, I've learned all these skills and what's, what's so cool about them is like, it's like, it's like, I, I can, I can list like 10 skills I have, but I actually have one skill. And the, and the one skill is I know how to learn. I know how to practice. 
I know yeah. how to do something, fail, and try again and again and again, right? Yeah. Which is one skill, and then and then you're like, oh, I have ten skills. I have one skill, mm. right? Mm. And and I think that's the same, yeah. As as you're saying, like it's the same with language. It needs it's an it's an alive thing, and and almost with all learning, I think. Mm. Um, yeah, you could you and 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 I think with the amazing resource that the internet is, with mm. uh, movies and cool stuff like what you do and stuff. I mean. People can just, especially with English, they can just take it in in this like very dynamic way of, mm. of joy. Mm. You know, it doesn't have to be this rigid thing, which is, it's amazing. Um, I think, you know, the internet for some of its negativities really offers amazing things. Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, if you think about like how great a library is, if you're somebody trying to just build knowledge, now we've got something it's like for skill building you know it's, it's a, you know you can't really build i mean you can read about stuff in the library to build a skill but the internet right pr provides opportunities to 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 practices um i want to ask you mary um because you mentioned practice and i have this set feeling that you think of practice the way i think of practice and it's the way that uh we think of practice with music with dance uh with sports um it's not the way most people in English language teaching or language teaching in general, for that matter, think of practice. For example, most teachers I train, when we talk about this word and we talk, well, what I do is I present them with the idea of thinking of language learning, English language learning, just because we're doing English, but it could be any language as studying the language, uh, practicing the language and using the language. And studying the language, we can all pretty much agree on, right? So it's, you know, learning these vocabulary words, maybe the position of the tongue when you speak, like it's the under the microscope kind of trying to figure out how it works. Okay, that's fine. But when it gets to practice and use, that's really interesting because I'll say, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll ask, well, what's an example of practice? And even though they see use on there as coming up as the next one, what I'll get a lot is, oh, you know, uh, have, uh, uh, having a conversation with someone. I think that's really interesting because to me, a conversation is use, right? And <laughs> what, what you practice are things that you repeat and make mistakes. That doesn't mean you can't make mistakes in a conversation, but a conversation mm -hmm. is real time, real life, and it's a one-time thing. So, you know, a mm -hmm. job interview, a conversation, you know, a TOEIC test, that's not you practicing like these, this is use. <laughs> and, and then, you know, when you look at music and sports, it's so obvious, right? So if you're practicing the piano at home, making mistakes, repeating things, because you're going to have a performance, that performance is the conversation. It's the job interview. Right. And again, it doesn't mean you can't make mistakes, but the more you practice and make mistakes, and that's why teachers are always saying it's okay, it's okay to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's because, you know, mm -hmm. then when you're in that situation, you'll feel more prepared. You're more ready based on that practice. So it, it always confuses me how <laughs> that gets lost on a lot of teachers mm -hmm. and especially learners, what the difference mm -hmm. between practicing the language and, and using the language. How do you feel yeah. about that? Because I get before you answer, that really gets into the play. Because what is play? I mean, play is where you are, you know, repeating things, making mistakes, having fun uh, in, in a way that practice should be. So some kids hate practicing sport, a sport or an instrument. And that's because probably they're not playing. They're having fun with it mm -hmm. when they're doing mm -hmm. it. So what, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's actually something else I was also thinking about. Um, so... So, I mean, like, I completely agree with you. And, and on that, like, practice, yeah, just having a conversation, you're not getting feedback. I mean, mm. if you speak to some random person, they're definitely not going to be like, oh, you should use the past simple instead of the present mm -hmm. perfect. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, but um, just just on that, on that practice thing, like, adults, I think we are, I mean, this terror of making mistakes, like, I mean, you've probably taught children and adults, as you said, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you, you must have noticed, like with a kid, you're like, that's wrong, do this. And they're mm. like, who, whatever. <laughs> well, an adult? And they're like, oh. and some of them will be like, oh, okay. So I say, yes, I say it like this, they repeat it. Mm -hmm. And others, they'll be like, okay, and they'll move on. Okay, I'll move that's on. Right. And then you're like, no, mm. you need to say it. 
you need mm. to practice but but i mean we're we're so scared of not being like perfect and we think oh later i'll i'll, I'll deal with it later yeah. i'll do the practice later because now it's the performance but but learning in that um and learning that like these in in the state of play i think is is a mm. huge thing to move them away from this like i made a mistake mm. into this making a mistake is part of it because we're actually just practicing this mm. one thing like you can explain as i said in my present perfect game we're practicing the change between the present perfect to the past simple mm -hmm. so if you make mistakes then we can just continue mm. doing that and playing and then in in that structure which is which is so cool and something i really try and impart to my students some of some of them refuse like it's kind of this like i don't ever want to be wrong and i understand mm. that but um yeah because mm. just one more thing when i was studying italian when i was quite young when i was 22 before i was a teacher and everything i um i i didn't speak italian i, t I learned studied italian for three years and i failed my oral in my third year i failed italian i mm. never got my degree because i was so terrified we'd sit in these <laughs> conversation classes and they would say something to me in italian i'll be like yeah, yeah. No talk to me like like i just always get it i remember this deep fear of making mistakes and it's it's kind of laughable now because i can't imagine doing that now you know i'm mm. very happy to butcher a language i'm trying to learn you know <laughs> like um sure. and i just i just know that this this these thinking can really uh, really be helped through through just games and and, mm. and creating that environment of like mistakes and this is how we learn, you know, it's so important. Mm. Yeah, I want to, I want to, because I really love that present perfect past simple uh, um, game. I want to, I want to ask you uh, for others that you like and that you've, mm -hmm. either, that you've done yourself or you found just a few suggestions. I think people really like that. But before that, just, just uh, continuing what we're talking about here for a moment. I I'm wondering about your experience. You, so you're teaching online. So I want, I'm wondering about the difference between in-person online with things we've been talking about uh, with, with playing games uh, and, and other things with, with, with play. Uh, and I also want to talk about differences between, you know, uh, teaching an individual student and a group. Because your example about, you know, feeling like ah, I was with other people around right and i'm wondering now um so let me just ask you first are you teaching you, you mentioned all the different nationalities that you're teaching is it is it always one-to-one -one or do you do small groups online so it is usually one-to-one -one, but i've also taught groups online mm. uh it's hard it's yeah. harder <laughs> right. but, it, yeah. but it, yeah it's it's a uh, um yeah, you have to be very creative in the group situation, but also in the individual situation. So, so just to answer your question, like face-to-face -face mm -hmm. games, so great and mm. so much easier um, in a real classroom. Like a lot of games that you look up online, you have to learn how to adapt. Like I remember with some of my kids, I was, there's all these board games that you can see um, online, I was like, I want to play a board game, and then I was, I was like, how do I do it? Mm. And then I, I realized how to play a board game online. Like mm -hmm. you've got the sheet, and you and you stick it down, and then you and then you copy little pieces, and then you mm. have a dice on your phone that you can roll and show, <laughs> and, and and then you get the kids. It's, I usually do this with kids. You get the kids to to do it on their phone, which they love. They love mm. rolling the dice, you know. And then it's at least something that they can do. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is, it is difficult. Like, um, it's not easy online. I mean, yeah. there are, there are the issues and then obviously one-to-one, -one, there's a lot of cool games that are great for classes and you need to try and adapt to make it fun for them to do with the teacher mm -hmm. because I can speak English and they can't. So mm -hmm. there's always this, like, we can't ever like compete or anything like that. Uh -huh. So uh, not that I, they can't. Sorry, I, not I have a, I have an online game. I've got to, I've got to show you at the end for sure. I wasn't planning on getting into this necessarily, but it's so important about students feeling like uh, you know embarrassed to make a mistake. And and do, do you feel like that uh, happens less in one to one? And it's more about when they're with a group, they're they're more uh, worried about that. Or you find it's also true when it's just you and the student that they're also feeling like you know being corrected freaks them out and it's hard for them so it's so individual mm. um 
I would say in a group, probably people are, are more embarrassed because it's always obvious who's getting corrected more than the others. Uh, yeah. And you have to be so <laughs> sensitive to that. And I find with adults, you have to be very sensitive to, to these things, obviously, mm. and be very in tune with it. Um, and often, like, if I know it's too much, then obviously I'll correct less. Um, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm quite a slow corrector, so I have to be careful sometimes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, some of my students <laughs> like just just don't like. It's almost like they 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 struggle to they like they just don't really want to learn or, or something. At the end of the day, like you you try mm. and you try and help them, but. I have a few students that, yeah, it's hard to really get them into that, but I do try. I think mm. that's, as a teacher, all you can do is try as much as you can, you that's know, true. and hopefully, sure. hopefully it works. But um, I mean, with error correction, yeah. I mean, you know, not, not correcting errors, if it helps, with, you know, in a fluency activity uh, can, can mm -hmm. make sense. Uh, correcting errors can certain, certainly help, but what's best uh, is exposure to correct forms. So if you're playing, yes. games, so back to games again, like if you're playing mm -hmm. a game where there's uh, a lot of repetition in a fun way with the language in the correct form, then, mm -hmm. that, I mean, that's in the end, <laughs> what's going to correct most mistakes. Like, you know, so, yeah, so sure. if we're looking at something like, you know, uh, I mean, native speaking kids say things like, you know, I'm making my homework when they're three years old, you know, yes. and, and, and the reason they they know later it's do homework is not how many times they've been corrected. It's because they hear yeah. do homework, do homework, do homework, do homework. They mm -hmm. see do homework, mm -hmm. do homework. So mm -hmm. it's, it's about exposure and, you know, nothing, nothing gets more exposure than a song or a game that you get yeah. sort of addicted to and you're you're just repeating it and getting those mm -hmm. those exposures to correct forms so what what mm -hmm. are what are some of the things you like to do with students besides the present perfect game because i that's a great one oh well, yeah i play i love playing taboo it's really mm -hmm. great. um yeah taboo um just like there's a lot of different grammar games that is that is similar to those ones um mm -hmm. as i said we i do a lot of board games with the kids mm -hmm. um yeah, so and, online, and so especially. I mean, you're you're only teaching online now. We have a lot of teachers yes. who are teaching online, so maybe we can talk about that. Like, what what are you? What do you find works best uh, online? Um. So so I mean, yeah. So taboo, mm. twenty questions, super mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Um. Those are those are my like very very favorite go to. People can play taboo forever, and it's such a good game. So do you um, adapt it, or you mean the the official taboo? Like, doesn't it depend on? So, the, so there's level? a there's a there's one site that works beautifully because mm. sometimes I, I there's I've I've checked out a lot, and sometimes there's a few dodgy ones. Yeah, that's that you there's also the topics. Yeah, can you put the site yeah, in? Yeah. Do you so, mind? Do you uh, mind? Yeah, I can. It I'll give it to you now. It's, yeah. it's amazing. Um, it's so great. So what I always do is I say to my students, I, sh I show it to them. And then I show them that they can, if they don't know the word, they just click next. And then next, 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 mm. next, until they find the word they know. Oh, that's um, cool. Oh, I don't know this, this site then. Okay. I have to check okay, it Okay. Yeah. It's super nice. So yeah. So I always share screen. And mm. then I show them the word and I give them examples and then we stop sharing screen. So we have it on our computer okay. and they just click next until they find a word that they can explain. And they love it. Like I can play hours and hours. Yeah, and hours yeah. It's Very such cool. a good game. It's so good for explaining stuff. Um, mm. Yeah, it's um, so it's definitely my my top one. Um, yeah, and then there's, then there's lots of um, like, you know, the ISL Collective? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There's a yeah, lot of good stuff I'm, there. Like I'm addicted to ISL Collective. I, I can't believe that that resource exists. And yeah, um, it's a really good one. There's so many like there's like Jeopardy and mm -hmm. all sorts of cool PowerPoints that you can do forever, you know. And also, um, like adults love idioms. They love mm -hmm. it. Every mm -hmm. time you do idioms, they just love it. So mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of amazing like Jeopardy idiom games and mm -hmm. um, all sorts of things. Or just yeah, um, and phrasal verb stuff like that that's also yeah, like um in some sort of form um yeah and then also video and the isl collector there's also all these video quizzes i, I was are, gonna say yeah it, 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 we're talking about play but we're so far really talking about just games which is, i guess most what most people think of when it comes to play uh but certainly with yeah. adults like uh we think about games more but when you think of play 
like the power of play are you are you thinking only about games or are you thinking are there other activities you would put in no i mean like so so it's more it's more just like creating that environment where mm. it's like it's like okay so just making it really fun like so my point is always like connect with the student first see where they are see where their boundaries are and then like let's let's like have some fun and let's be ridiculous and then yeah, I mean, it's also, I guess, role play. You can do a bit mm. of that. It's not really my thing. I'm very bad at not being myself. It's I'm terrible. At it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah. So, but I don't know. It's more just that playful atmosphere. And then when you do have like a certain point, like they're struggling with some some tense structure, then we then we go into it. And then and then like I normally pull up like some sort of game to practice it. So yeah, mm. like also. You know, the past perfect, you can um, tell your day backwards. Like before mm. I went to bed, I had, right. had supper and I had, you know, or like they can ask, oh, what had you done before you did this? And, and that's cool. Mm. Um, also question asking, because the thing is I find so often, and I and actually did this for years, I was always asking questions and I was like, my students don't know how to ask questions. Yeah, I have, so, I have so many games with questions. Yeah, besides 20, 20 <laughs> questions is great, but there are a lot of things you can do with questions. Yeah, and it's so great. And then and then all of a sudden I realized that my students didn't know how to ask questions. I was like, that's so bad. Mm. And now they always have to ask me questions or ask questions about my dogs or about stuff, mm. you know, just introducing their, that like back and forth and also a good people skill to teach people, especially children, to ask questions back. Oh yeah, that's and and also the question grammar in English is really difficult for most people, especially mm. the do operator that doesn't exist in almost any other language in the world. So if, if they don't feel comfortable with questions, they're never going to really internalize the grammar that they need for for statements. Also, <laughs> so it's you yeah. know we got to do it. You know, if teachers teachers here right now and watching the recording, what would you say to them if they're like, well, but you know, I have adults. I get what you're saying, but. You know, I, often teachers will say, well, yeah, I love games. If students do, a, you know, uh, a really good job during the lesson, then that's their reward at the end. <laughs> uh, and I feel like people like you and me are like, wait a second, the game's the what? reward? Why isn't the game the, the activity, you know, the, the main activity itself as a way to teach grammar and vocabulary? So I, think I, I would say with adults, you, I mean, you, like, you, so you don't need to play games all the time with like with adults, I think, I think it's more just like bringing it in from lots of different sides, you know? Mm. So I can, we can chat about stuff for like, you know, some of our classes and, and that's great. But um, it's just about also in the homework, if mm. they, you know, if they like homework to, to give them like, you know, songs and all mm. sorts of different ways of like listening and being part of the English world. And like, yeah, I mean, it's yeah it's also so specific like I mean like play for you is not the same as play for me you know like for me I want to be outside on the mountain but other people might want to be crocheting mm. crocheting I like crocheting but you know what I mean some people yeah. like gaming some people like so so it's all got to do with what do you think like mm. is a good time I can't just be like hey I think grammar games are super rad and we're gonna do that all the time mm. that's not cool you know right. so yeah. Yeah, I, I just like it's it's more just that feeling, that lightheartedness environment, mm. like like okay, so you made a mistake and that's great, and now we're gonna say it seven times just because that's crazy. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And that's right. cool. Like like you know, I don't know. It just yeah, yeah, yeah. Guess, it's not it's not just like about I, games. I naturally have a playful nature, so so I don't really think too deeply about these things. Well, I think it's, it's just, what you're saying earlier about you know you're like like what, and we're talking about what children do. You say you're like a like a child, and 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 so am I. We don't want to stop that idea of play. Like when you're a kid, it's you know you could play a game, but when you say like let's let's go play, or you know your parents say go out and play, it's not playing. It doesn't have to be a structured game. <laughs> it's so it's more about that idea of just everything's play right um, in terms yeah. of learning just you know in a relaxed way um mm -hmm. and and and, mm -hmm. and and being creative at that moment like doing something silly or or fun can help remember uh language i mean in the end of the day it's really a lot of it's about remembering it <laughs> and if yeah. you're, you're stressed and if you're too focused as we said analyzing it um especially the way adults get then you know you're not you're not going to remember it as well 
Um, but if you do yeah. it in one way, you know, what we learn with pleasure, we never forget is the, you know, credo I live by, <laughs> you know. Beautiful. Um, it's beautiful. Yeah. And, uh, and another one I wanted to throw out there, because I have a feeling you'll like it too, is because um, we're talking about the idea of practice, that practice, uh, uh, practice promotes uh, accuracy or a, pra- a practice leads to accuracy in the sense like, you know, with music again, like if you, if you, if you play the same piece of music over and over again, you know, and you're, and you're motivated. Now, if you don't like it, that's something else. Right. But if you just getting really into that music or, or, you know, tennis or, or a dance, right. And you're just repeating, repeating, making mistakes, you get better and better at it, you know, and, and accuracy in language, a lot of people get stuck there where they're thinking, oh, that means I have to be perfect. And, you know, you shouldn't worry. You should just speak, you know, but it's not fun and you don't feel good if you're not getting better. <laughs> so, you know, that, mm. that repetition, that practice, at least the accuracy, then accuracy then leads to confidence because you feel more confident as a result of being more accurate. And then that confidence leads to fluency. So when people ask me, yeah. you know, what, what is the formula for fluency? You know, practice to accuracy, accuracy, confidence, confidence, fluency. And I think games of fun activities, you know, where you're mm-hmm. not thinking about the language, just like when you're, when you're playing the saxophone, you're not thinking about how the keys work. <laughs> you yeah. You're, you're, you're thinking about the song. That's what play is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also like bringing you to that flow state, mm. you know, like, so sort of- thinking about that so like i think i told you like i'm, I'm a rock climber i spend a mm-hmm. lot of time rock climbing mm-hmm. and um it's kind of the same as piano playing like when you work at a piece like perfectly it's the same as rock climbing you you try and learn a climb a hard climb perfectly so you can execute then it you're in the flow after it. yeah yeah and so and so when you do get to that point of getting to the top of the mountain perfectly and not falling and executing all those moves you've practiced yeah, you're in that you're in that flow, that like beautiful, it all comes together state. And I think I think we've all experienced this also, you know, I've learned other languages, not perfectly, but there's these moments where like I say the same and I'm not even thinking, it just comes out of me and mm-hmm. I'm speaking this beautiful Spanish sentence and I'm just like, oh I am <laughs> like Spanish is in my heart, like I am part of it. And it's 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 uh and I think, yeah, that's that's what it's about. Like when you when you when you do these practice when you when you've learned it then all of a sudden mm. it just comes out you're like that's how it is and mm. and that's what we want to help our students get to that that beautiful that's state right. you know that's it that's yeah. it cool another thing I, I I think you'll like is uh, I've been noticing a people ask me like what is what is fluency or the relationship of accuracy and fluency I tell them what I just told you when someone says you know what's the best way to get fluent like in activity or there certain activities. And uh, I tell them that there isn't one formula, but it's about getting hooked on something you want to repeat. You know, it's getting hooked on something you want to repeat. Um, And, you know, the best example I've seen in the last couple of years are people, uh, usually uh, young kids or or young adults, uh, who get hooked on uh, a game online that requires them to watch tutorials, like gamers talking about how to do better in the game. Uh, And it's the perfect recipe when you think about it, everything we know about second language acquisition. So they want to watch the video. It's in English, so they have to do it in English, you know, but they're not watching to learn English. They're watching so they can, you know, level up in the game, you know, or make more money in their game or build a house in their game or whatever it is they need to do. Right. And then they're watching this sort of intrinsic motivation. Right. Uh, So they're going to watch the video for one, for one person watching, it could be this like, you know, labor intensive thing like you know it's so difficult right but they're not thinking that way so that's the play element right they're just like they're so into what you know finding out what to do and then these videos are like you know 17 minutes long two or three people talking about how what to do in the game okay first you go over here then you do this you do that and you ask any of these uh people uh the magic question like how you do you watch the videos once or, or do you repeat them? They'll look at you like you're insane. Like I have to watch it 10 times or 15 times 
to be able to know what to do in the game. So what they're getting is 15 times of that phrasal verb, right? 15 times Amazing. those, those the, that verb tense. And, and it's, I, my nephew, I just uh, met, I mean, I met him when he was really little and I hadn't seen him for years. It's my wife's nephew, but my nephew too. And he, he came to Paris uh, a couple weeks ago and his English is almost perfect, he lives in Congo. He never uses English with anybody, but he's like addicted to these games and he's just got like perfect English. Never Amazing. studied it, never studied it. So I, I, I think mean, that's, that's also the thing with the, with the music. Um, mm, one, of yes. my, one of my teenage students was obsessed with um, One yeah. Direction. Yeah, same thing. Right? So getting one hooked, direction. getting hooked and on then, something you repeat, getting hooked on something you repeat. And so if a teacher yeah. says, you know, a teacher says, well, how can I change my lesson? How can I do this? I'm like, you know what? How often do you have these kids? Oh, three hours a week. I'm thinking it's not so much what you do in those three hours. It's getting them hooked on something they repeat outside of Get class. Get them addicted. <laughs> not, you know, Find their addiction. Three hours, I don't care what approach you use <laughs> or what you're doing. It's yeah. not enough exposure to the language. So if you can right. motivate them and get them hooked outside on, 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 on something, then, then you're going to really see results. Yeah. And of course, games and songs and, you know, this, this is the way to go. It's the way to go. Um, I, I want to show you bamboozle. I want to see if there are questions here. There's usually a delay. Uh, if you have any specific questions, guys, uh, please put them in the chat. If you're watching the recording later, as most of you are, you can comment wherever you see the recording. It's going to go out first on the American t Soul Institute Facebook page, um, but it will also be in other places. Let me just show you the only website I use for games now. Uh, okay. So good. So this is my library. So for example, if we do something like we're talking about idioms, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is this is this is not the idiom game I want. One moment. Well, let me show you like like for example, like phrasal verb Olympics or whatever. So like you can see it this way. So I created it. You can, and they have the, the gifts and everything, right? Amazing. So these are, these are just uh, a way to so see, the, a way to see the questions ahead of time. This is not the game, uh -huh. right? Nice. So you can see, you know, the answers, but the mm -hmm. game is amazing. But like, if you're team one, choose an emoji. Let's go. Rainbow. Sorry, I couldn't hear that. Rainbow. The rainbow. The rainbow. Is my hair starting to fall? Ah, so you have to give me a whole sentence. Oh, is my hair starting to fall out? Is my yes. hair starting to fall out? It's correct what? for 15 <laughs> points. Okay, I'm gonna choose the motorcycle. Other team loses 25. Oh no! Oh no! You are minus what? 10. See how multiple choice works. Like, what is the average amount of time a player of Fortnite spends enjoying the game weekly? Uh, right? but then what the I get my students to do 10, is they, 10. Yeah, but they have to answer with a complete sentence. So they have to say the uh, average amount of time a player of Fortnite, player spends, Fortnite <laughs> spends enjoying the game weekly is six to ten hours. That is correct! <laughs> Boom! First guess, amazing. So great, yeah, it's, it's amazing. That's I'm I'm like all jazz from our one second of playing. No, no, no. Yeah, I mean, I mean, everyone I show it to is just like, oh yeah, def definitely got to do this. So let me let me ask you, what what are your plans as as an English teacher in the future? Do you see yourself like continuing the way you you are now, like teaching uh, adults mainly? Well, you said you have kids too, kids and adults, but mainly, correct me if I'm wrong, individuals and online people around the world do you, do you see yourself uh sticking with that you like that uh or you may do so, other things? um i yeah i mean i am not teaching super loads at the moment and i'm actually kind of um i kind of really care about the environment a lot and um mm. i i'm kind of looking into maybe trying to do some more environmental education here in south africa as well mm. okay um, cool kind of one of my big passions so i think I'll continue teaching kind of to the capacity I'm doing at the moment, which is not like full time. And then um, I really want to get more into environmental um, education because I feel like that's what the world needs more than anything. <laughs> so, for sure. For sure. Yeah. 
so that's kind of my um my my current um kind of looking into different community projects and trying mm-hmm. to um see what value I can bring to um uh yeah the our burning world <laughs> so. I mean speaking just because of bamboozles on my mind now um you know what you can do because I, I find that topic is really interesting to students as well so you know you can make like a trivia game about the environment yeah. so easily you know and uh, and and maybe you know develop more materials for teaching about teaching about the environment and kind of segue yeah into that definitely and, and also i mean obviously english teaching is a vehicle for anything so um you know you you you're talking about something so if if you can incorporate some kind of important topics and uh, definitely do try to um yeah because sure, it's, sure. it's all together, which is which is an amazing. I mean, it's an amazing vehicle for these things, and um, yeah, just to get people thinking about yeah what what we're doing. And, uh, yeah, and I, and I think that you know English being this you know lingua franca now, it's like it's well, we're going to be needed as English teachers more and more for just sort of you know uh, skills for the future and, uh, not, mm. not just focusing on, on English, uh, you know, the, the nuts and bolts of the language as much. So I'm, I'm really excited about the future. If, if, if that's where it keeps going and we get more into, uh, virtual spaces and gaming and playing because, you know, yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's where all the fun is in language learning, I think. Yeah, for sure. And, and it just, it just the more, more connections between, mm. um, you know, just people being mm. able to, and I think, and I think that's an, that's another incredible thing is just like playing people getting together online. I mean, we're just creating yeah. a world more and more um, inclusive. And I think, you know, so many mentalities are getting broken away through mm. it. It's, it's just, it's just epic. You know, people who look around are like, oh, the world's got so many problems. You're like, no, we are so much more open yeah. to people from other countries. And it's amazing. Yeah. Like, and play. Well, yeah. uh, so people from all over the world playing together. Yes, yeah. Very good. <laughs> That's a, hey, do, people all over the world playing together. Do you know my song, Play Together?
It's so good. No, I loved it. Cool. Because the world is better, which is basically exactly what I just said. So. That, that, well, that's right. Once you, once you said that, I was like, wait a second. That reminds me of something. What is it? <laughs> exactly. Very nice. Good. Yeah. Well, Mary, it was really, really a joy to have you here. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, I mean, I love talking to teachers, you know, whoever they are, wherever they are, whatever they're doing, but uh, the power of play, hey, nothing, nothing, uh, <laughs> nothing I connect to more than that. So it was so much fun talking to you about your experience. Yeah, it was great. Right. It's like when you told me to take, take a topic, I was like, I only have one topic. <laughs> <laughs> It's the best there really is no, more. no, but there I'm is like, something to be said about it. It's like, it's sort of like once, you know, you never go back because we realize yeah. that, you know, play, as I said early on, I mean, playing is learning and learning is playing at its roots and, mm -hmm. it, you know, it should, should continue to, to be playing. Um, yeah. I think, I think there's yeah, so many creative ways you can like take an idea. You're like, I want to do this. And then, and then you can, like, I, I remember seeing mm. something, I'm like, oh, I can't do it. And then I'm like, no, but I could do this and this, and then we could do it, you know? And so. Absolutely. And then, and then you've got it forever. Something works, you know, in a, in a, in a play uh, scenario. It's just so great to pull it out. You have fun as a teacher too. I mean, that's something we didn't get into too, but I mean, if you're, if you're enjoying, you know, having fun, then you're going to be more motivated and you're, you know, we need to save that for part two. We'll have to have you back and we'll talk about the power of play yeah. for, you know, for keeping yourself motivated as a teacher. But that, but that was the whole thing. I was like, you know, I fell into teaching because I realized I could have fun and people would pay me to do it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so was, we just have to worry about those. Happened. We got to worry about those teachers who aren't playing. That's the, that's the thing. But hopefully some of them are watching yeah. this, this, this video and, and, and starting to rethink what they're doing. Uh, thanks so yeah, much again, uh, Mary. And yeah, I hope we can Thank see you, Jason. you again have you back on and glad glad yeah. we're now connected thanks everyone for being here yes. live all of you out there uh watching the recording from all of us at american Tesla institute see you next time on featured teachers take care everyone thank you jason nice okay. to meet you bye -bye. awesome